Hi, my name is June and I am from SkyMiser. In today's tutorial, we will be using NVDLA to demonstrate how to add a new backend in the ONMC compiler. This section will give you an overview on the NVDLA design. Here is the section's outline. We begin with a short history of NVDLA, how it became an open source project, and what motivated SkyMiser to implement an NVDLA backend in the ONNC compiler. Then, we will introduce the features that makes NVDLA a popular inference engine, and talk a little about the resources available in the open source domain. We briefly discuss the NVDLA hardware architecture and summarize the available hardware configurations. Finally, I will show you some performance benchmarks to compare with other accelerators. The NVDLA story began when NVIDIA announced a new Tegra Xavier SoC for self-driving cars in 2016. A specialized convolutional neural network, object detection, and image classification, and included a deep learning accelerator. At the GTC US conference in May 2017, it was announced that Deep Learning Accelerator Integra Xavier will be open source to public. The roadmap scheduled early access in June and official release in September. People call the design NVDLA, which stands for NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator. SkyMiser released ONNC the Open Neural Network Compiler in July 2018. At that time, the only publicly accessible NVDLA compiler was a binary in its open source repository. The compiler binary supported only a limited number of operators, and without source code, new operator support could not be added. This was an obstacle for both the industry and academia who wish to adopt NVDLA as their inference engine. As a software company specializing in compiler design, SkyMiser began working to support NVDLA in September. To serve the research community better, in March 2019, the first ONNC version that supported NVDLA was open sourced. Now we briefly discuss the features of NVDLA. And like many open source projects that originated from research or student projects, NVDLA is a complete production grade commercial design. After being silicon proven in the Tegra Xavier chip in 2016, NVDLA is currently part of the commercially available Jason Xavier, Drive Xavier, and Drive Pegasus development kit. The hardware engines in NVDLA fetches tensors from memory, perform computation on the tensors, and write the tensors back to memory. The only exception is convolution, whose output must pass through SDP to be written to memory. All other engines include a DMA interface to write back results to memory. The modular design allows users to add or remove an engine without affecting other hardware functions. Fusion between different hardware layers is still possible, but it is an option and does not restrict customization. Unlike many convolution engines that only support 1D or 2D convolution, the NVDLA Conv engine is a true 3D convolution engine that does not need to break down 3D convolution into sets of 2D operations. The initial NVDLA design targeted high-end purposes. Its specification wasn't suitable for low-end, low-cost scenarios, such as IoT edge devices. The V2 design was parameterized, so the design can be scalable and support a wider range of applications. There are tools in the open source repository for users to customize the hardware configuration and automatically generate the bare log code for the, in the test suites. In addition to the RTL code, a lot of related materials are also available in the public domain. 
There are various documentations in the repository. These include the open source roadmap, introductory descriptions, and technical information on RTL generation, verification, synthesis, and integration. There are also documentation on software stack, drivers, and programming guides too. Currently, there are three branches in the hardware repository. NVDLA v1 represents the original handcrafted high-performance design. NVSmall is the low-end design for applications such as IoT. The master branch contains example specifications, tools, and templates to automatically generate corresponding Verilog code and test suites. The software repository includes the software stack and a virtual platform for software development. In this slide, I will give an overview of the NVDLA hardware architecture. A typical NVDLA system is a small SOC that usually includes an embedded processor such as ARM, RISC-V, and the system bus with an off-chip DRAM. The CPU programs NVDLA through the slower bus called Configuration Space Bus, or the CSB, and NVDLA accesses data on the off-chip DRAM through the AXI system bus. DRAM accesses from all NVDLA subblocks share a common AXI interface, and they are first arbitrated internally as the MCIF, or the DRAM interface. We use weighted round robin for arbitration, and each hardware block has its own register to program the arbitration weights. If you like, you can add an extra SRAM dedicated to NVDLA as scratch pad memory. The CPU cannot access this SRAM, and all hardware blocks in NVDLA share a common SRAM interface bus. All the hardware blocks accessing SRAM arbitrate at CVIF, the SRAM interface. The SRAM interface is similar to the DRAM interface. It also arbitrates with weighted round robin, and each hardware block has its own register to program the arbitration weights. Their, the most important hardware engine in NVDLA is the Conf processor. On average, more than 60% of inference time is spent in the conf processor. The performance of the conf processor is proportional to the number of MAC units in the conf processor. In order to achieve the highest performance, you need to maximize MAC utilization rate. In NVDLA design, there is an internal convolution buffer in the conf processor to store feature data and weight. NVDLA first fetches feature data and weight into the convolution buffer. Then data and weights are moved to the MAC units for calculation. With this buffer, you can avoid long latency to fetch tensors from DRAM and keep MAC busy all the time. So the size of the convolution buffer also affect inference as well. The single data processing unit, or the SDP, is an element-wise processor that performs arithmetic calculation independently on each data cube element. It supports minimum, maximum, sum, multiplication, ReLU, or ProLU operators. In the full configuration, a lookup table is available to implement nonlinear activation functions such as sigmoid. The Planner Data Processor, or PDP, performs 2D operators such as average pooling. The cross-channel data processor, or CDP, has a set of lookup tables to calculate the local response normalization function. The lookup table can also be configured for other nonlinear activation functions such as sigmoid. The data transfer and reshape engines are only available in the high-end version of NVDLA. There are a few restrictions on operator fusion on NVDLA. First, all convolution outputs must go to SDP before being written to memory. Also, 
The PDP engine can be downstream of SDP, but not the other way around. Lastly, the CDP engine cannot be fused with any other hardware in the accelerator. And NVIDIA parameterized NVDLA after Xavier was fabricated. It became the low-cost version for IoT devices and some other configurations. This table compares the parameters of different NVDLA configurations in the GitHub hardware repository. The hardware parameters in rows 2 to 5 on the table are the most critical to performance. They involve the configuration of Mac and CBUF. Atomic K represents the number of Mac in the convolution engine, while Atomic C represents the number of multipliers within each Mac unit. The product of Atomic K multiplied by Atomic C represents the computational capability and is sometimes reflected on the configuration names. Atomic C also determines the bank width of the convolution buffer in the convolution engine. The size of the convolution buffer, or CBUF, is also determined by the bank depth and the bank number. Weight and data share C buffer during convolution, and user can program the number of banks for data and weight at compile time. These numbers are critical for performance, and users is responsible to select the most suitable bank numbers. Here we show the performance numbers released by NVIDIA. The numbers are quite competitive compared to other accelerators in the market. We conclude this section with the references. Thank you for your attention.